So um, in, this, in this case, what we have is an isosceles trapezoid. And what they're asking us to do is to find all the missing term, or all the missing lengths and all the missing um, angles. So the important thing about an isosceles trapezoid, we know that and since it's a trapezoid, we have one set of parallel sides. And those are going to be our bases, right? Um, and it's obvious you can see that these are going to be our bases, not these two, as these are like pointing in. And they obviously will intersect if you extended their sides. So we have one set of parallel sides. And that's also important about an isosceles trapezoid is remember, opposite sides are congruent, right? You have one pair of your opposite sides. So therefore, that side is congruent with that side. So if the length of kn is 4, then we know that the length of lm also has to be 4. Right? Isosceles tra um, trapezoids have opposite congruent sides as well as opposite congruent angles. Three. So what that means is this angle is congruent to that angle, right? as well as this angle is congruent to that angle. OK? Now, there's a couple things for you guys to um, kind of note about this as far as, looking into, uh, as far as looking into the sides and everything with this. So first of all, if since these are opposites right, of each other, if that's 32 degrees, let me get a different marker. If that's 32 then this is going to be 32. If that's 17 degrees, then this is going to be 17 degrees. All right. We can also use the idea of alternate interior angles, meaning the fact of since these are parallel lines, right, and we have this line here that's a transversal, if that's 17 degrees, by applying um, alternate interior angles, we know that that's 17 degrees. OK? And if that's 17 degrees, then we also know that this is going to be 17 degrees. OK? Now, another way is to, Zach, what's wrong? Are you writing this down for three? OK. Um, now, the, what was nice about, um, what was nice about like rectangles and, uh, um, it was nice about rectangles and so forth. We always knew they were you know, going through to add up to alternate interior sides, Camille, you going on? that they were going to be on, on supplementary, right? But one thing we notice is if we look at these two sides, we could say, well, you know, what is one thing we know about a quadrilateral? And you don't always have to be thinking about things. Um, thing. If we know everything about a quadrilateral, we could say that these two angles, 32 and 17 is going to be 49. But what I could say is all these angles are going to add up for a quadrilateral to how many degrees? Um, how many degrees do we add up for a triangle? Which has three sides, 180. A quadrilateral has four sides. So all the angles add up to 360. So one thing I could even write, guys, is just thinking of it. I could say 32 plus 17 plus 17 plus 32 plus x plus 17 plus 17 plus x equals 360. All right, you could add up all those. Camille, could you um, put that face down on your desk, please? Thank you. So now, if I kind of add what I have here, 17 plus 17 is 34. That's 34. So you could say 34, 34. And that's going to be awesome. That's going to be 64. So therefore, I have 68 plus 64 which would be 132 plus x and x, which is 2x, equals 360. Subtract 132. So now I have 2x equals 228. All right? Divide by 2 x equals 114. Therefore, you can see that these angles right here for x is going to be 114 degrees. Okay, Because we know parallelograms, consecutive angles add up to 180. But that doesn't have to be the case um, with our trapezoid. Okay, And there we go. That's it. Done. Okay. Guys, 